when I read it, I was shocked. I was like, ah, how can he be there? How can he be there, mm. be servicing in the church? And this was me. Mm. I was in the church, working in the church, doing all that I did, but I did not know God truly. So I put myself on a journey and said, I will seek God for myself. Perception is very critical because it goes to form your whole belief system mm -hmm. and you know that in our Christian faith Everything is based on what we believe. Right. So believing wrong oh. Therefore becomes very crucial. Mm -hmm. So learning to perceive right mm -hmm. Is very important so that you are able to build a good belief system and therefore make right choices So that your life will be shaped in a better way Now, we are going to read the book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 1. And there is a story about a lame man. And we will get into this story and see how his perception changed and shaped his life. Wow. So Acts 3? Yes. Verses? 3, verse 1, go in. All right, so Acts 3, verses 1. Once again, I am reading from the NIV version. And it reads, One day, Peter and John were going up the temple at a time of prayer at three in the afternoon. Now a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him and did John. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, silver or gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Amen. Amen. So this is a story about a man. So this man has been laid right from birth, right? And the Bible says this is what happens. Every day he gets picked up and they put him at the gate, at the Beautiful Gate, where he asks and begs for arms. Mm -hmm. One day the apostle went to the beautiful gate, went to the temple for prayers, because normally what happens is every three o'clock they go to pray. Yeah. And when they went there, they met this man begging for arms. Watch this. This man has been doing this his whole life. Yep, but something caught my attention. What did? This is a place of prayer. Mm. So this is a place people go to pray. Yeah. But he went there for a different purpose. Think about this. If this man knew that there were some people called apostles who had the power to heal, or even if the prayers that were being offered in the church or in the temple was healing people, what do you think his decision would have been? Mm, to go into the temple to get healing. Exactly. So, what he saw, mm. what he had, and the people around him never gave him any information that said that you can come out of your circumstance. Oh. Think about it. I said it. Perception begins with information. So when there is no information or when there is wrong information, mm -hmm. you are perceiving wrongly. Yeah. So watch this. So because of his perception, based on the fact that he had no information, he now accepted his condition. Mm -hmm. Acceptance comes as a result of how we perceive. When you are going through situations and afflictions yeah. and problems, yeah. the reason why you accept them is how you perceive them. Wow. In the time of COVID, right, when COVID came, COVID was a scary time mm -hmm. where a whole lot of people decided not to work, stay home. Yeah. 
because they saw it was terrible. Yeah. But other people took advantage and saw that this is an advantage for me to make more money. That is true. So how you see a thing will determine how you act. Wow. That is so true, you know, especially being a healthcare worker. He also is a, a pharmacist. But we saw, and I mean, obviously, up with our jobs, you know, we were considered as a essential personnel. Yes. So we had to be there. But like you said, there were some people who were in the healthcare field mm -hmm. that chose mm -hmm. not to mm -hmm. work. Mm -hmm. So how we also perceived it yes. mattered. Yes. Also, yeah. a lot of people lost their jobs. Yeah. But to some people, it was an opportunity to start their own business. Oh, it is yeah. how you see the situation. Guys, it is so not good. the situation. It is how you see it because how you see it will push you in a certain way for you to take action. Wow. Some people saw it as an opportunity to start their own business. You see, sometimes, this is, that is why I say, if you understand the way of God, the way you relate with God becomes different. Because when you lose your job, yeah. on the normal basis, you start crying. Yeah. On the normal basis, you start I mean, thinking. there's nothing wrong with crying. You cry. There's nothing wrong with it. Cry. Yes, you first cry. But you, you, pray, you pray, but then you cry. Exactly. Yeah. You cry. You know, you cry. You, 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 you be desperate and all that. But if you really yeah. know how God works, oh. you come back to God and say, God, I still trust you. Amen. And I am believing that maybe this is the way you are pushing me Amen. to get into what I really... You see, that business plan has been in your head for a very long time, but you have never had the courage to do it. But now COVID comes and you lose your job. God is telling you something. God is telling you, move mm. and get that business set up. So it is about how you see it so this guy had accepted his situation because of how he perceived his situation yeah and so now somebody who was supposed to be working and making his own money has now become somebody who depends on people to carry him every day to bring him to the beautiful gate mm -hmm. to beg for arms mm -hmm. whatever you accept you maintain wow so because of his situation, he accepted the fact that That's this it. is it. Mm -hmm. So now the routine is, let's maintain this. Exactly. Every day at 3 o'clock. Exactly. And when I talk about maintain, this is it. You see, what was supposed to be a bad thing for him, which was he wasn't able to walk, mm -hmm. now has become his source and his means of what? Sustainability. Yeah. Because now, people look at his condition and give him money. Mm. So something he was supposed to deal with. Mm has now become something that he's, he's, he's taking, you know, yeah. his so income from. Because of the benefits, you know, maybe a certain situation is providing you, mm. you know, there could be a better that is it. for you. That is it. But because you are, like you said, maintaining it and, mm -hmm. you know, it's 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 not it's not wrong mm -hmm. per se because he's getting a living out of it. Yes. But there's better. Yes. So your perception concerning your situation really, really matters. Mm -hmm. It can keep you stagnant if you don't perceive rightly. Exactly. So, so, so he had allowed his condition to define him. Mm. You see, you accept something when you allow that thing to define you. Mm. So now he's seen as the lame man. Mm. That is the name that he has. And even when he was healed, the people said, oh yes, we recognize him. This was the lame man. Mm. It was because of the way he perceived mm. and the way he perceived was a result of him not having information or the right information and because of that it led him to accept his condition and many of us are just like the lame man mm. we have accepted our conditions we say oh i can never try this because it won't work mm. or i don't think i'm gifted enough yeah. I don't think I have the right qualifications. Oh, wow. And the Bible says, as you think, so you are. Mm -hmm. So because you think that way, there is nothing prompting you to, to go for that way. position. Yeah. And so you stay there and stay there and stay there. You get comfortable. Very comfortable. Very comfortable. You know? So it is very, very important to understand whatever is around you. To understand the situation you are going through so that you begin to look at it in a different angle because mm. that's what's going to change the situation that is right? what is going to change your situation because once you understand it and you see it from another angle everybody might be seeing an apple yeah everybody might be seeing a tree yeah but you you might be seeing a table out of the tree yeah 
Yeah. And that it's changes and that changes the game. That changes the whole game. Now, I want to talk about how we build our perception. How is perception built? Right. How do we build perception? Now, let's look at these examples that I put down. Number one, I asked you a question, right? I said, Michelle, what do you see? What did you say? I saw a camera. You say you see a camera. Yeah. And I said, I see what? A movie. Yeah. So my perception is coming out of what? Usefulness of the camera. Right. Yours is coming out of just from the appearance. So number one, we build our perceptions through what we see, appearance. Right. Number two, by thinking of the usefulness. Mm. Number three, example. Bible says money is the root of all evil. Right. But Bible also says that money answered all. Mm. Based on the circumstance, how you interpret this can either be good or bad. Your attitude towards money will be as a result of how you understand this. Because at what point he says the love of money mm -hmm. is the root of all evil. Mm -hmm. And then at one point, he says, money and all. Yeah. So based on context as well, mm -hmm. you can form your perception. Right. The fourth one is this. The Bible says, and that is one of my favorite stories in the Bible, that there was a time that Elijah has said there was not going to be any rain. And Elijah sent his servant to go and look out and see. Mm -hmm. The servant comes for the seven times and says, I see a small cloud. Right. But Elijah then tells the servant, Go and tell Ahab mm -hmm. to hitch his chariot, his chariot, mm -hmm. because it's going to rain. Right. Wow. Out of a cloud. Out of a cloud. Yeah. He sees rain. Yeah. Everybody sees cloud, yeah. but he sees rain. And not just like a cloud. Exactly. A, a, small... a small cloud. Yeah. Elijah mm. is speaking out of faith. Yeah. Elijah is calling what is not as if it was. Mm -hmm. So there is a perception that comes out of faith. Mm -hmm. It comes out of the belief that you have in God. That is the perception that God wants us to get to. Mm -hmm. Because when you watch the story that I told you about Adam and Eve, let me go back there, about Adam and Eve, it says that when they saw that the fruit was good for food, that is the usefulness, mm -hmm. pleasing to the eye, that is the appearance, mm -hmm. desirable for wisdom, mm -hmm. they had it. Mm -hmm. But what was the result? That their perception, it changed their relationship with God. Good. So it was a wrong mm -hmm. way of thinking. Yeah. It led them to the wrong path. Mm. So perception based on how you see mm. and uh, the usefulness of a thing or the appearance of a thing can lead you astray. Oh. But the perception that comes from faith based on the word of God mm. is the perception that as a Christian you need. Yeah. The Bible says in the book of Samuel, when Samuel went into the house of David to go and anoint David because God had called, had told Samuel to go into uh, uh, Jesse's house mm -hmm. to, to, to look for one of his um, sons and anoint, yeah. Samuel got there and saw Eliab. Yeah. He saw the height of Eliab. Yeah. He saw how handsome this guy was yeah. and he was about to anoint him. But God said, I have rejected him. Samuel was looking on the appearance, but God looks in the heart. Yeah. Perception, mm -hmm. the way you perceive, mm -hmm. God perceives us and God tries to look at us based on what is in here. Mm -hmm. It doesn't look at us from the outward. Somebody will see me and say, oh, this guy. Somebody will see you and say, oh, this girl. But God looks at you in a different way. I pray that you come to the point where you start believing what God sees about you rather than what people see about you. Amen. Amen. Because honestly, that will change the trajectory of your life. That changes. Changes the game. Because if you know how God sees you, mm. oh, you are not worried about people judging you. My you are not worried about anybody saying anything against you. Wow. Because you know yeah. what your father thinks about you. Yeah. And what God thinks about you is yeah. 
Yeah, like you said, he's not judging by humans. That is it. Because in our mind, you know, we have a certain way of what things mm. should be like. But if we are going by God's standard, right, it really changes things. That is it. That is it. So it is God's point of view, mm. God's perspective that we need to work with. Yeah. Ultimately. That is it. So the way we perceive is very vital and crucial to shaping our lives. Now, we're going to talk about how, therefore, mm -hmm. do we improve the way we perceive, which ultimately, as we said, affects our decision makings and therefore shapes our lives. Yeah. How do we improve? Yeah. How can we make this practical? Yes. In today, in our day to day. Okay. One, I wrote down this. If we want to perceive right, yeah. it means our whole belief system has to change. The Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 12, verse 2, it says, Be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind. Mm -hmm. Then you will be able to test and approve what God will is. Mm -hmm. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. To change our perception, which is a transformation, has to begin from the mind. So we, we literally have to get rid of self. Self. Because how we think is not how God thinks. That is it. And he makes this clear in the book of Isaiah. Exactly. Literally saying that my thoughts are not your thoughts. So we have to get rid of self in mm -hmm. order to perceive. That is it. Like how God We need to start it. acting like Moses. Mm. Who seeks the way of God oh. rather than the act of God? Yeah. Number two, the Bible says, "Faith comes by hearing, and hearing the word of God." Mm -hmm. So, the more word of God you hear, the more understanding you get about the word of God, mm -hmm. the more your perception change mm. because now your perception will be based on the word of God. Wow. Number three, compare the information you receive to the Bible. And let's read Acts chapter seventeen, verse eleven. All right, so NIV version again, Acts 17, verses 11, and it reads, Now the Berean Jews were of more noble character than mm. those in Thessalonica, mm. for they received the message with mm -hmm. great eagerness mm -hmm. and examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. Mm. It is good to receive the message oh, okay. with all eagerness, yeah. with all willingness, yeah. but the best thing is to cross-check. Yeah. If... Even Paul, mm. who Apostle is seen Paul. as the great apostle, his words were being checked. Oh How God. much more your pastor? Oh my God. You go to church every Sunday. You hear the word of God from there. You just come and throw your Bible and take for face value what your pastor said. Do you know where your pastor is coming from? Mercy. And that is, that is Christianity in 2024. That is it. We are, we're not doing our research. And it says that these people did it every, every day. Every day. They, every day. Whatever Paul said, Mercy. they went to their Bible, came home, sat down, read to make sure that what he's saying is from the Bible. Because me. why? <laughs> because why? They are trying to form their belief system. So they are trying to perceive right. They wow. are trying to understand wow. right. They are wow. trying to get the right perspective and the right point of view. Wow. So that their decisions that they take, their choices that they make wow. will be based on that. And so that their lives will be shaped in wow. the right way. Wow. What are we doing today? We go to church. Mm. Your pastor will come. Say whatever they say. And then you just take it, you come home, and then that is why your life is the even, same. Even you go and you argue about it with somebody else about your pastor being right mm -hmm. when you have not done your own Exactly, research. exactly. A lot of people do that. Mm. They just quote what their pastor has said to people, and somebody might even be correcting them, but they will be challenging them because they say, my pastor said this. Yeah, yeah. We and then they'll tell you, this. your life will never be the same. Sister, brother, your life will always be the same so long as you don't cross-check it by yourself so that you can be able to apply it to See, anything done out of understanding is not done properly. And anything that is not done properly, you don't benefit from it. Hmm. Yes. Then number five. Oh, number four. Depend on the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Bible says that the Spirit of God is the Spirit of truth. And when it comes upon us, it will lead us into all truth. So if you want the right understanding, seek 
the Holy Spirit. Amen. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you. Read the book of John chapter 16, verse 13. All right, John 16, 13. verses 13. And it reads, But when he, the Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. Mm. He will not speak on his own. Mm. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. Amen. Amen. So the Holy Spirit helps you to perceive. He says he will tell you what is yet to come. Mm. Jesus, even before the Pharisees told, he had taught. It was who? The Spirit. The Bible says he perceived from the Spirit. Mm -hmm. So you need the Holy Spirit so that you'll be able to perceive what is right and apply it to your life. Number five, Proverbs chapter 11, verse 14. Proverbs 11, verses 14. 14. And I hope you guys are taking notes. Proverbs yes, 11, this, this verse really 14. Good. Proverbs 11, verses 14. For lack of guidance, a nation falls, but victory is won through many advisors. Yes. So in the counsel of the multitude is safety. So sometimes you need to compare your information with the people around you, mm -hmm. with your environment. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes you think you might know, but when you share with somebody, that person might, might bring a point of view or a, a perspective and then you'll be like, oh, okay, I thought it this way, mm -hmm. but maybe what you're saying could be right. Mm -hmm. And so with the right research, you come to a conclusion and find what is right mm -hmm. to build a right perception and to build what a right mindset right. for you to be able to have a good belief system, for you to be able to make right choices, right. To, for you to be able to shape your life yeah. in the right direction. But all this with a grain of salt because, you know, piggybacking off of the points you made, you mm. know, we have to also go back, whatever advice they do give you, exactly. go back and Definitely. do your own research. Definitely. Do your own research, as yeah. I said earlier. Yeah. Yes. So, so, so ultimately, we, we, we understand that everything begins with how we perceive information that yeah. comes to us. Yeah. And the way we perceive it will determine the actions that we will take. Yeah. And the actions that we will take are going to then shape our lives. Yeah. Wow. Lord, help us perceive rightly because mm -hmm. we want to make the right decision. You mm -hmm. know, we, we pray the same prayer that King Solomon prayed. Mm -hmm. Yes. Give us a discerning heart so that yes. we are able to yes. perceive rightly mm -hmm. to differentiate right from wrong. Exactly. So, Nana, you know, you've given us a lot of great jobs, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. all of this, I'm sure, comes from uh, a, a real life experience. Yes. So, what advice would you give us to help shape our perspective to mm -hmm. really change our mm -hmm. lives? Mm. Okay, so I want to share something about me, you know, yeah. um, on, on, on your channel and I believe it's, it's, it's going to help people because that was how um, I was able to, you know, change my life essentially. So I have been in ministry before. Um, my dad is a reverend minister, mm -hmm. so I grew up as a PK. And Pastor's kid. Exactly. <laughs> and so my whole life has been church. in the church, yeah. you know, I play the drums, you at the point I sing, at the point I was a choir leader, um, at the point I was the administrator of the church, I preach, I held um, um, dedication wow. services and all that. So you actually like stood on the podium and oh, gave yes. the word? Yes, I gave the word a lot of times. Wow. I've been to other assemblies of God churches back in Italy mm. to preach as well. Uh, I was the original youth uh, uh, leader at really? a certain point, so I've done it all. You were in it. I was in it. I was in it. And in the year 2018, mm. um, I took a step back. Wow. I took a step back because at a point I felt like, Michelle, everything that I knew, you know, about God and everything I was doing in the church was something being done because my parents pushed me to it. Mm. And you, 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 you can't find yourself in a similar way because as Ghanaians, you know, yeah. you know, we grew up in the church, yeah. you know, our whole life is church. Yeah. Every Sunday every we dress Sunday up, we go to church. Yeah. So sometimes we don't really know God ourselves yeah. Yeah. because our parents push us in that direction. And I read a scripture that shocked me. And I think that was when my transformation began. Mm -hmm. The Bible says in the book of Samuel that when God was calling Samuel, Samuel was in the temple. He was lying down. Mm -hmm. But he could not recognize the voice of God. Mm. The Bible says, because someone did not know God. Mm. When I read it, I was shocked. I was like, ah, 
How can he be there? How can he be there? Mm. Be servicing in the church. And this was me. Mm. I was in the church, working in the church, doing all that I did. But I did not know God truly. So I put myself on a journey and said, I will seek God for myself. It's good my parents have, you know, brought me on that path. Mm -hmm. But now I want to experience God for myself. Right. So I took a step back. And that is where I started reading my Bible by myself. And that is where my transformation began. That is why I started getting understanding of scripture. There is a lot of things that I had been taught before, mm -hmm. but now I had to unlearn all these things. So, you know, I want to I want to go back. So, mm -hmm. while you were preaching or mm -hmm. doing the things, you were reading the Bible. Yeah, exactly. But you felt like you just you were basing it off of other people's experiences. And exactly. Like and and it, and it, at that point it was it was like something you have to do. Mm. It became nearly like a work for me, you know. Like the lame man. Yeah. That yeah, exactly. Yeah. That I was in a place that okay, this is me. I have to do that. I've accepted. Okay, I'm a PK, so I have to just follow suit. Wow. So I was doing it without understanding. Wow. Anything that without understanding, yeah. you don't do it rightly, yeah. and you don't actually get the blessings of it. And so when I started the journey of me, you know, going on a search on my own to understand God and to, uh, 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 and to, and to seek God by myself, yeah. it opened a whole new chapter of my life. Yeah. Where now, I'm not perfect. Right. I can't say I'm, the, I'm righteous. Mm -hmm. Nobody is, except for the blood of Jesus. But nobody can change my mindset about God. Wow. That is where I stand now. Because you... you Tested him exactly, myself. Your Moses. Exactly, and now I know where I stand yeah. when it comes to my faith. Yeah. But before no, yeah. I didn't know. Yeah. So, so, so my advice to everybody is: seek God for yourself. Yeah. Seek God for yourself. And and most of the time, you know what happened? Let's 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 listen to this, right? I I wrote something now the other day and said, what you know. Mm -hmm. Or your knowledge is proportional to your environment mm -hmm. so because of the environment I was in mm -hmm. everything that I knew was just what was being given to me yeah. when I stepped out and started reading on my own I begin to have a different information different perspective because now it is not just what they tell me but it is me reading the Bible and God speaking to me through the Bible yeah. and so my perspective and my perception changed. Yeah. And so my walk with God now is on a different path. Yeah. So people, read your Bibles. Yes. Seek God for yourself. Yes. Go to church. Get the word of God. Come home. Cross-check whatever is there. And seek the Holy Spirit to teach you. And I believe and I'm telling you, your lives will be transformed. Amen. Yes. Amen. You know, Paul says something about that. The word of God is not just about enticing words, mm, right? mm, mm, but mm. it is through demonstration Appreciate of power. Of power, yes. So once we go on that journey to really perceive how, like how God sees, right? Have that perception of God, the right perception of mm -hmm. God, we are able to really demonstrate the power in that our lives. That is it. That is it. That is it. That is it. And God, God is so good. He's just so merciful. Even though you were doing the things, maintaining the things, he was still with you, right? Exactly. You wouldn't say that, oh, we're just doing it arbitrarily. Mm -hmm. He was with you, mm -hmm. but then mm -hmm. he also pushed you in the direction in where you had to seek him for yourself. That is it. And that really changed your, that is the tra tra trajectory of your and, life. And Michelle, I feel like a lot of people of our generation yeah. are in my same predicament that yeah. I was before. Yeah. And they all go to church. Yeah, we all, they, we they, all do. They go and do those three-hour fasting and 12-hour yeah. prayers yeah. and all that, yeah. but it's because... Somebody's telling you to do it. Exactly. Mercy. So basically, they're doing it, but they don't know what they are doing. Yeah. So my 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 you know advice to everybody is read your Bible daily and pray to the Holy Spirit. Pray to God, you know, that He gives you understanding of His Word. Because transformation begins from understanding of the Word of God. Wow. Because that shapes your perception. Yeah. And once your perception is changed, your belief system will change. Yeah. And once your belief system is changed, you are able to make good choices 
which affects and impacts your life in a positive way. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. You guys, this was so good. You know, Nana, we'll definitely love to have you back. Are you willing to come back? I will be so glad to come back. <laughs> Are you willing to come back? I will you be guys, so glad to come back. If you want to that, let him know in the comments. You know, give this video a like. And of course, you know, anything that you took from this video, please do not be afraid to share. Um, and also, if there's any add ons that you want, any comments, topics, comments, comments, comments. Any please, topics that please. you would want us to talk about, um, let us know. You know, obviously, this is BCT. God led. Um, we'll definitely pray over the topics before we come out here and, and talk about it. But leave any topic discussions down and, of course, comments. How can we improve this? You know, let exactly. us, let us yeah. know. Feedbacks, feedbacks, please. Yeah. Feedbacks. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys. Nana, thank you for being here. Oh, thank you, Michelle, for having me. It's been, it's been, it's been a great day. <laughs> I've enjoyed every bit of it. Oh, you, know, good. you know, this is what gets me excited when I have the opportunity to share the word. So thank you very much again. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. All right, guys. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye-bye.